Welcome everyone to Between Plays Stock Market Strategies. And once again, we have with us uh, Sandy Panzar, Tech with Sandy. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. And yourself, Albert? I'm doing great. Uh, I love the uh, the headphones over there. I mean, uh, it stops any of the feedback. It's great, man. Yeah, nice over the ears that I picked up uh, recently. So they're they're good. They're up good. in the game. Up in the game. I love it. That's it. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, listen. You know, I just wanted to. Uh, we ha- we have to bring this. Uh, to light you know uh, recently we've been doing i mean recently we've i think we started this uh, either july or august and i think it's july and we were talking about redundancy and failover and how important it is right and this was you know we started talking about this right after the uh rogers outage and how important it's going to be in the future um for iot and all these other areas and look i think we nailed it what do we do today if everything was just out how do you how do you communicate? Who tells us what's going on? We would imagine if everybody was cut off, all this infrastructure was cut off somehow on purpose. Mm-hmm. When do we find out? How do we know? What's where's the resembling point? So you know, what's the? There's got to be a way that we got to keep up this communication with each other. I I feel that relying on a single service provider is a failure. I mean. Not having access to 911, not having access to emergency services is huge, right? Oh, yeah. And so, and, and that that's a real, it's a real problem. We nailed it because look at what's happening in Florida, right? After Hurricane uh, Ian, and then even Fiona comes and tramples right in, right? And I mean, you know, how, have you seen, you know, what AT&T has been doing over there? Yeah, well, that's uh, the whole first step thing, right? So that's, um, it's impressive. And it's good that these organizations are building these kind of networks to aid first responders, they're not relying on the public uh, wireless system per se. um, And they're really dedicated to those kind of services or emergency services, which I think is really important for um, not just 911 and text messaging and things like that. It's so that people can get to those disaster areas, right? So anything from search and rescue, lost in the forest to uh, disaster zones where you need an organization like FEMA to come in and take control and, you know, ameliorate the situation. I mean, that kind of service needs to be there. And if it doesn't rely on the regular networks, that means it's something that you can always keep up, whether it's, you know, I, I would imagine that due to Ian and Fiona, probably a bunch of cell towers got knocked out, cell service was out of service, right? And st- so to be able to have some kind of backup system, even though it may not be like for like, but it, even for just emergency services, it's very, very powerful. And this is similar to what we were talking about um, the other day that the deal that Apple's cutting with Global Star, right? And direct to their handsets and, you know, what everyone else is trying to put together for those emergency networks. So I think it's incredibly important, that work. Absolutely. I mean, because when you look at it, FirstNet, I mean, basically it's a first responders, right? And they, they say that they're going to set the bar uh, for now and for future uh, t- the future to come for network resiliency, right? So, you know, and if I, if I go into an article that I read and, per, you know, basically what, what they're saying here and to put it into, um, in, into, into those words, it says here that um, we are the only provider with assets dedicated for exclusive use by public safety, all right? Uh, and as a public safety partner, we'll continue to set the bar on what success looks like for network resiliency now and in the future. But when you look at what it is that they that they do, um, you know, there, it, it's it just reminds me of Global Star because it 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 can track like people that are in areas that there is no coverage. It's a satellite coverage system, and that's what Global Star originally. Well, originally, I'm talking about before they went commercial. Now, that's what they've been doing. They've mm-hmm. been doing exactly that on oil rigs, search and rescue, all this kind of stuff. They've been doing it forever. And now you have something like FirstNet teaming up here with at and But in reality, I mean, you go to Apple, Qualcomm, Global Star, you know, they're all pretty much working together. Uh, with the X65, uh, I believe it was, yep. and N53, you mm-hmm. take these type of technologies, throw it in an Apple phone, which is like the most sold phone around. You know, at t saying here that 99% of their network is up 
because they don't need to use traditional. They don't need to, to have, you know, these cell phone wires and electricity working because they're working off a satellite grid. Yeah. So I, mean, I think, you know, that's true to a certain extent. I mean, they, they say they want to do network resiliency or improve network resiliency now and into the future. Um, into the future is going to be competition, right? I mean, everybody's going to want to have emergency networks up. They need them. We know that we need them. The Rogers outage set that we experienced in Canada in the end of July, I think it was, uh, you know, that was a, a big wake up call. Everybody's moving in the right direction. Everyone's taking responsibility for their networks. Even Rogers is taking responsibility for their networks and they're coming up with their own backup plans and their own backup services. So I think that's really important to remember that every it, it's, it's an evolution. Who's going to be first? Who's going to be best? Who's going to have the best coverage? Everyone is going to claim that they're the best. They've got the widest network or the most capable network or the most resilience. That's going to come down to independent testing where they're going to test jitter packet loss latency on each of those networks and how well they how well they would stand things like Fiona and Ian, right, for instance. Whereas I still believe that in order for this to work, right, because you have numbers, multiples of systems working together, you still have to... You know, we touched on this before, um, lay into that zero trust network architecture. And the zero trust network architecture, as we, I think we talked about it briefly uh, on another uh, show, you know, it, it's not about we don't trust you, it's trust but verify. That's what it really comes down to. So that means, yes, I'm going to trust your network, but we're going to verify everything, which means that there's governance, there's um, security, and there is ensuring that who you're talking to or whichever side you're talking to is actually who you're supposed to be talking to, right? Yeah. So uh, like if, if you look at that, it's, it's about you know um, having a strong source of user identity, uh, user authentication, machine authentic authentication as well too, because it's not just about, oh, okay, is this Albert? But is it Albert on the right machine? Which machines are talking to which, right? Then it falls into uh, policy compliance, you know, how healthy is your device? Is your is your computer dying or your CPUs falling apart? And then you have access control policies within the applications that are running on your machines as well, too. So in my earlier days, we did a similar version of this for a, a large um, chip manufacturer uh, and cell phone manufacturer, which is no longer either anymore. And they um, they used to have something where we would, you know, determine the level of security based on the connection what data was being passed over the connection, which machines you were connecting to, and who was accessing which information from where to where, right? That is a great example of what zero trust is, right? Yeah. Because it, it, it's it's really, it's it's not just about human factors and what people are doing, right? It's something finite, and it it crosses the boundaries of you know morality, ethics, lawfulness, justice, judgment, and it's something that in and of itself creates a trust bond between two servers or two applications or even two people, right? Oh, yeah. So for instance, like if, you, if you're on a chat, for instance, you know, how do you know who that person is on the other side? There has to be a trust mechanism. And that's a really good example of where zero trust, even though it's not implemented in, in most chat and messaging systems, it's still a way, like it's an example of, what you would need to do if you had two devices, two applications, two endpoints to create that trust. Yeah, no, exactly. And the thing is, is that when you're looking at, um, you know, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, uh, business to business, and you're looking at all these different factors, uh, deep fakes, uh, you know, everything that we're talking about now sounds a little bit more like, you know, um, the integration between blockchain, you know, uh, because, you know, blockchain, you know, will, will accumulate all of this information. Uh, technologies, uh, you know, the nodes that you have in order to figure out certain uh, uh, the specifics of what's happening. Uh, you're looking at all this other world. I mean, like, look, sure, we're going off on a tangent, but you're looking at crypto, you're looking at uh, decentralization, you're looking because everything that we're talking about now sort of all comes back into one thing where we're going to end up living in a, a, a digitalized world where, you know, making sure that uh, things are also uh, in set and in order, right? I mean, it has to be done orderly. Like you can't just be running a company or you can't just be uh, trying to run something and then everything's just a mess, right? And I think that that's one of your, that's one of your strengths as well. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, to add to that, like if you, if you want to build a zero trust architecture, right, there's three main things that you have to do. So you have to have enhanced identity governance, right? So you have to know 
that means you have to know who the person is on the other side or who the entity is or who the machine is on yeah. the other side, right? right. And yeah. that's done with you know access controls and they're all policy based. So in your organization, so think of a firewall or a router, you know, the way I have my firewall set up at home is deny everything and allow things to go through when I need them to. Thank By you. default, they're not set up that way. They're set up to let everything through and you have to set your policies in the reverse order, which makes it a little bit more difficult to manage. Sure. Most most days though, the best practice is to do it the way I was saying it. And then you have the use of micro segmentation. So it's really, I trust you from here to here, but maybe not from there to there, right? And that's again, based on the, the policy-based access controls and the governance. And then the last thing is using network overlays. So um, if you look at S you know, a layer three overlay or pure layer three overlay or software defined perimeters or edge, if you will, right? That gives you a control over the edge, gives you control over the network layer and gives you control and access to create a secure network from end to end from one end point, which let's call it a branch into the cloud in back to uh, a data center and back to another edge, for instance, right? And that's, that's a, a nice implementation of Azure Trust architecture. Because you're validating everything along the way. Yeah. Okay. So that that's exactly it. So when we get when we get back down to basis, the zero trust is like the biggest thing right now. And you know when we look at um, all these new uh, I want I don't want to say technologies, but let's say conferences, all these new conferences that are coming up, like decoding tech that's coming up very soon. I know you have others that you have to. I know there's a Linux Foundation that you're part of as well. Yep. Um, uh, you're the vice chair on also the uh, decoding tech. And I know that we'll be over there. Um, and Crypto Alex will also be there with Between Plays. We'll, we'll yep. be there as a group and be meeting other new people, watching new technology, 5G, um, immersiveness, uh, when you're talking about um, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, decentralization, all these types of things. This is where we're going into. So therefore, redundancy failover, once again, like we had nailed it since July. We've been talking about this since July. That zero trust is the main important thing. We need to have redundancy in place. We need to have failover in place because the world of IoT and all these other worlds, it just it just won't work <laughs> without them. Uh, agreed. And, and you know, you know, backup of redundancy is a, it's a given. You need it. Right. I think we, we've proven it over and over and over again. We just don't listen to ourselves as organizations. Now, I think people are finally getting it. The zero trust is a driving factor, right? I mean, backup and redundancy is fine on its own. But again, if you have to connect to other architectures and other networks and things like that, and if you want to create some kind of a secure overlay, then you have to follow that zero trust networking architecture. Right. Yes. That, that, and come up with those standards for yourselves, for your organization. And then you decide what you trust and what you don't trust. Right. And that's how you build a, a secure business that is going to be able to deliver services securely to its end consumers, whether they're B2B or whether it's B2C, whatever the case may be. Well, that's that brings me to something else. So I'm, so I'm doing a little bit of a research on um, a company that um, we will be talking about, I believe, in our next podcast which is uh, Converge uh, Technology Solutions, you know, and I'm just going to get into a little bit of description so that everybody knows what we're going to be going on. So they go under the ticker symbol of uh, CTS.to. But I, just before I go there, I, I want to just reiterate the fact that um, companies like Global Star, um, they're, not, they're, not, they're not something of the past. They're the future. They are definitely in the future game. You know, I, I, I just wanted to make sure that you know, the, the users out there, I'm not saying that, you know, should we invest, not invest in all this kind of stuff. Everybody needs to do, you know, their own research, you know, and like we say here, our model research, prepare, plan, execute on all that. But when I look at something like Global Star working in, you know, in tangent with Qualcomm and Apple, I mean, it's not like Apple just came out and said, oh, I'm going to pick Global Star just because they're there. No, they picked Global Star based off of research. They researched the network and they said, you know what? This is who we're going with. They picked them for a reason. So I'm thinking our uh, for our next show, which would be really, really great, is to be able to go into Converge Tech. I know we had spoken about them a little bit, Converge Technology yep. Solutions Corp. Uh, so basically, I'll just go over the description a little bit. They provide software-enabled IT and cloud solutions for corporate and government institutions in the United States and Canada. 
Its solutions approach delivers advanced analytics, applications, modernization, cloud, cybersecurity, digital infrastructure, and digital workplace offerings to clients across various industries. Company engages in networking, virtualization, storage, disaster recovery, and continuous replication of critical applications, infrastructure data, and systems that assist clients in the deployment of data centers, assessment design, architecture, and optimization of public and private cloud options, and provisions of email, voice, and video communication technologies, as well as enterprise networking, security, and infrastructure products. It also offers desktops, laptops, computer peripherals, and other computing needs mobile location-based technology, software solutions built using blockchain technology and solution architecture in the areas of privacy, access, identity, management. In addition, the company provides managed and hosted cybersecurity, cloud computing, and analytic analytics, systems architecture, professional staffing, and lifecycle and desktop recovery services. Uh, and they, uh, CTS Corp. was incorporated in 2016, headquartered in Gatineau, Canada. This sounds also like a company of everything that we spoke about here today. And definitely we, we should do a uh, video on them because they seem to fall perfectly into, um, into the strategy of what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Or absolutely. I mean, I, uh, Converge is a, is a great example of an organization that's taking this seriously and they are building solutions around um, those three main pillars that I said for on the zero trust networking architecture so that they can deploy those for their customers. It's very, very clear. That's, that's the path that they've gone down. And of course that's uh, beneficial to its customers. And it also is a great selling point for them too. Definitely a piece of the puzzle. All right. Well, you know what, uh, Sandeep, thank you so much for being here today. Not a problem. All right. So thank you once again, tech with Sandeep on between play stock market strategy. Always remember research, prepare, plan, execute, stay strong on to the next show. This episode is brought to you by TriStar, West Island, and 360 Punch, where there's something for everyone. 2144 Trans Canada Route, Dorval, Quebec, H9P, 2N4. Go to their website for more information. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Between Play Stock Market Strategies. Hit the like and the subscribe button. Head off into our description below if you'd like to know where all of our social media links are and also the podcast, whether it be Apple or Spotify. We will be doing interviews with CEOs, with analysts, and it's not only on the stock market itself, but also on cryptocurrencies and blockchains. We will have guest speakers. We will be doing panels. You will be able to enjoy a lot of different content. Have a great day, and always remember, research, prepare, plan, execute. Stay strong.